Hello. Am I audible? Okay. Hello, hello. Hi there. How are you, Lee? Good. Hey, hey, yeah. Good, good. I oh, was just finishing up lunch, actually. Um, um, I'm sure you're most interested in what that is. It's it's wontons, <laughs> which uh, had the effect of uh, leaving leaving me with some bad breath, which means any amount of affection with my wife is out of the question for the next day or two. So now that now that we're on public record about uh, my affections with my wife. <laughs> uh, thankfully, she doesn't she doesn't watch these. So nice. Um, bear with me one moment. There's a few folks that are messaging looking to join. Oh, nice. Hey, oh, there's Otto. Very good. Hey, Otto. 
Hey, hey. <laughs> there he is. Um, hey, did, did, um, did you make the big transition, like the big uh, sort of role change? Is that a public, publicly talkable thing? Or? Yeah, it happened. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Good. Um, so, yeah, I just jumped uh, ahead and uh, I'm still uh, settling in for a bit, but uh, well, so far, so good. So. Nice. Yeah, they don't, uh, yep. Um, Boy, I feel I feel kind of awkward saying this, um, but it's maybe I said it to you before. I'm not sure. Um, I know a lot of Red Hatters, and there's something about their talent acquisition team where they uh, they just they really hit it like close to the mark very frequently with quite intelligent people who are genuine and open. They have time for you. They they want to engage and share, and it's um, they it's it's. That obviously doesn't apply to you, but I'm just saying that you know you've landed in a good spot. So, <laughs> oh, thanks. <man>. Yeah, <laughs> be clear. <obviously>. All right. <laughs> just seeing your reaction to that is uh, is telling. Like, yeah, cool. Nice. Uh, yeah, cool. Well, so in the. Um, in the Zoom chat, I posted a link to today's meeting minutes. So we're three after, and so now we're four after. So let, let's uh, let's get going. Let's um, I'll share the minutes, and we will kick off today's um, um, Sig Network meeting. So it's January twenty first. I think this is the second meeting of the year. So welcome to 2020, 2021. Uh, well, that's kind of, what are we, we're, what are we, 20, 21, 21? Is that the, we don't have quite the trifecta, but we're, we're close on the date. Yeah, it's actually, it's the 21st day of the 21st year of the 21st century, I guess. Hey, there it is, yeah. Uh, um, okay, I knew there was something special. So, very good. So, we've got uh, um, Anish here with us as well. Uh, Mr. Nima, uh, Mr. Mr. Otto, who's, uh, it's not, it's not Vanderkamp like this, is it? I have, you'll, you will correct me. Good. Um, if, if you're also on the call, um, everybody should have access to the notes, so please fill them in. Um, like I was saying, this is a SIG network, uh, CNCF SIG network call. We meet um, twice a month every first and third Thursday. Our meetings are public, they're recorded, they're posted on, on YouTube. Um, the, the, let me, there's a few folks that are on the call for the first time today, so uh, welcome. Uh, we, might, we might do a little bit of, since there's a, a smaller size of us today, or at least so far, we might do a little bit of introductions, that would probably be nice. The CNCF SIG network, just for those that are, haven't been around um, for a long time, unlike, um, unlike Nikolai, who has been around for a long time, um, the CNCF SIG network um, has, uh, is chartered and sort of has the, is sort of the, the home base, as I would describe it, home base for any networking and traffic related uh, project within the CNCF. So Linkerd and gRPC, NATS, and there's a long list. Service Mesh Interface, Network Service Mesh, Kuma. Um, I'm, I'm gonna do a disservice to all the other ones we didn't mention. Um, we have had, and so we generally start off our meetings with uh, those topics first, and then move into our, our working group topics. And the working group um, today is what I expect we'll spend most of our time on. It's where we've got um, a few different work streams um, and so before we get into that working group and it's kind of charter and what, what we're doing within there, it, it, the working group itself is a subgroup of CNCF SIG network. Some of these particulars really aren't either here nor there, uh, but I'm, I'm mentioning them for, for clarity because we're gonna talk a lot today about service mesh things, a lot today about um, Nighthawk and, and load generation things. And, but that's not all of what SIG network focuses on. 
So um, our topic for SIG Network has, hasn't changed since last we met, which is to acknowledge that um, the ambassador proxy um, or the ambassador project based on Envoy proxy is um, has been um, submitted for donation to the CNCF. It's been submitted at an incubation level. So there's um, sandbox incubation and graduated levels in the CNCF in terms of measuring the maturity of a given project, its adoption, et cetera. Um, speaking of Kuma, Kuma is uh, at, an, at a sandbox level, but I suspect Nikolai, think, I think probably hinting toward or maybe thinking about that next step um, soon. If yeah. Nice yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, my camera is not working after some of the meetings today. I need to reboot, but you know, found that I'm at. Yes, yes, we are definitely looking. So I'm uh, one of the, 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 the people, the maintainers there on this uh, service mesh. Or I would like to refer to it uh, as like um, Envoy control plane, let's say, but so we're implementing the service mesh ideas there, but uh, yes, we are a sandboxing project for since I believe June or like late June or early July last year, maybe late June. And uh, yeah, we are we we are very very much looking into gathering the needed um, mostly like case studies or, or how would you call it success stories of. Uh, uh, the fusers um, to actually be able to qualify uh, for the incubation. There's also a number of other uh, things there. This is the major um, what to call it, uh, API. Yeah, nice. for, yeah, for the maturity of a project. Yeah, sorry. Okay. No, no, sorry. I, I, um... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, so you have uh, case studies, user stories, and preparation for incubation. That makes a lot of sense. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the you, you kudos on the, the clip by which Kuma is moving. You know, um, yes, yes. It, it's uh, interesting how how you can, because I joined like a, a, 10 months ago, nine, 10 months ago, and it was pretty young project by then. And since then, you can literally see people getting, you know, of course, as with every project, people come and go. But it's it's interesting how the the, the profile of the people that come. So first, first you get some kind of explorers, people that just, just go there to poke a little bit, send some feedback, and then disappear. And now you get people that stick a lot or, like, come and start contributing directly. So it's a interesting uh, experience for the full lifetime of a open source project. There's a, there's a blog post or something to write in there somewhere about the journey of an open source project and the, <laughs> the community members, explorers, uh, pioneers. Yeah, the... yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Nice, okay. Um, well, good, well, I don't, I don't, we don't have any further update on Ambassador, it's just, um, at least in as much as I'm aware, just out there for review. And so uh, do go out and everyone's encouraged to comment. Um, any, anyone that's on this call or not even on this call, just you're uh, most welcome to. So, um, so there's a few folks who are here today that have been um, working on some of the service mesh working group initiatives of which there are about three. And I won't bore you with slides, for long. Um, this is just uh, intended to be a, a recap and introduction for folks about what I was just articulating before, the fact that there's CNCF SIG network, sort of it, its mission statement and um, things that, so I'm, I'm gonna touch on the slides, we're not gonna cover them. There's some other co-chairs here. Uh, Matt Klein is our, um, well, at least was formerly or still is our TOC liaison. So I don't, I don't know that I gotta go look that up. We've got some, so, so this is a, a dated as of this last KubeCon. So the, oops, so we've got some projects that are um, on the horizon. Ambassador is, is coming on in. Um, as a sub working group uh, of the SIG network is a service mesh working group 
some of the, the just briefly its initiatives include a collection of service mesh patterns, um, curating a, um, a list of those which you know, patterns are sometimes considered best practices um, or at least um, described architecturally for people to follow. And so we haven't spent a lot of time on this call. I'm going through those. But if the link, the link to this slide is, this deck is in our meeting minutes. Um, and so too then is the link to the full list of patterns that are being described and articulated. So they'll, they'll be, I anticipate there'll be, there's, there's a number of, so, so if you can't tell, I've been, for many of you, I've been trying to corral us into um, getting a lot of our conversations into this Zoom or this meeting channel. And because there's a lot of work going on, I don't know that I would characterize it as behind the scenes, but there's just been a lot of work going on in these various initiatives and we're trying to organize those um, here. So another one of those is service mesh interface conformance. Um, some of that is driven from the SMI meetings, but those are 30 minute long every two weeks and there's a lot of service meshes to coordinate with. And so, so there's work that goes on outside of it. Um, service mesh performance, the specification, we'll probably talk about it a little bit um, later today. Some of the, the, uh, the individuals and, and a university that is working on MeshMark, they are not on the call today, so we'll talk about that. Instead, um, <clears throat> Nighthawk and Get, Get Nighthawk as a, as a project is where we want to drive into some particulars. So people don't need to listen to me speak the whole time. Um, Otto on the call is probably the, the, a core Nighthawk maintainer or the, the core Nighthawk maintainer. Otto, do you want to introduce Nighthawk to folks? Oh, you know what, you're, you're on mute. Okay, sure, he'll, he'll come back. And so, um... all right. All right, is this better? There he is, yep. Very good. Ah, so apparently Zoom doesn't like my headphones. <laughs> um, yeah, so in any case, Nighthawk. Um, Nighthawk is uh, a layer seven performance characterization tool that, that basically comes with uh, well, a couple of utilities. Uh, one of them is uh, a client, uh, a CLI, to uh, synthesize load. Ik zie niet wat overeenkomt met Besseling kan Zwitterpel of je teletisch van opdem. Their theory. <laughs> That's a theory uh, joining in. Um, <laughs> oh boy. So there's um, a CLI, which allows you to control load generation. Uh, it comes with a gRPC surface. Uh, you can use the CLI to control that or program something your, yourself to steer it. And you can also use that to drive load generation. Um, and then there's a test server that comes with it, which is based, uh, well, ev actually everything is based on Envoy's libraries. Um, and um, well, in, in short, um, I guess that's it. And then there's obviously the why Nighthawk, because there's uh, a bunch of load generators out there. And well, one thing that uh, we've been trying to make Nighthawk shine in is um, being like super sensitive in, uh, um, well, measuring latencies very uh, fine grained. So uh, the target was uh, sub 50 microseconds uh, of precision. Um, and then there's also like multi-protocol support in there. So H1, H2, um, and uh, well, yeah, I can go on for a while, uh, you know, about all the features it has, but I think like the sensitivity is like a key thing. Um, so that's 
um, that that's kind of like uh, uh, a very short introduction, I guess. Oh, thank you. Um, let's try to oh, on. Yeah. So it's actually microseconds. It's not milliseconds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Do we have the? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm obviously you know we've managed to achieve that, but um, that also imposes. Um, well, it always goes probably when you're you know measuring latencies that uh, the systems in the environment in which you do that that you control the noisiness there. But I think that's um that that's a given irrespective of which tool you use and so um yeah and so there's there's part of the problem statement that nighthawk is um aimed at, at solving and has been solving um nighthawk from my vantage point has been growing in popularity and it's, um, and those that have been using some other load generators have also, um, you know, are also turning their eye to Nighthawk. It, like it's compelling enough um, that there are people looking at switching off of some of their load generators to, to Nighthawk. Um, there are some other compelling aspects to Nighthawk that maybe Otto, you could speak to as well. Um, so the, the adaptive load controller, um, the horizontal, the horizontal scaling of Nighthawk, th those? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the, 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 there's quite a bit of features uh, around these days. Um, um, so uh, one of them is, uh, is like um, uh, the adaptive uh, load control that was uh, contributed by Google fairly, well, not too long ago. Um, and with that uh, adaptive load controller, you can, well, uh, research questions like um, um, what QPS can I sustain given that P90 stays below uh, a certain threshold? So it will then automatically like try different RPSs and converge um, towards a certain frequency and then attempt to sustain that. Um, and uh, obviously that's that's just uh, a sample because it's, um, well, the, the principle of, this, of it is fairly generic. So you can, you know, iterate on some other things as well. That's all extensible and pluggable, but this is kind of like the, 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 the primary use case that it was built for. Um, and then there's, well, something I've been working on myself, that's like horizontal scalability. Um, so when you try to scale um, a bunch of load generators in a, um, then, then there's a couple of, well, challenges that arise. Um, I do think two big ones are um, keeping these clients uh, synchronized. So you, you know, if you want to achieve like a certain global request frequency, um, well, we try to make that that easy and uh, um, accurate. And then the other part is like um, collecting all the results and um, presenting them, aggregating them in a way that's uh, that that makes sense. Um, a third challenge is abstracting, abstracting away from all that. So, you know, I think ultimately it would be um, super cool if you could um, run a horizontally scaled remote execution. Well, basically by specifying one or two flags and that would like be the difference when uh, using the CLI to execute a local test and an, a horizontally scaled test. Um, so basically that means that if you um, deploy the right services to uh, a couple of nodes and you, um, that then you can, um, well, 
easily orchestrate those and make them work together to um, send the load somewhere and then um, you'll just get the results out as if you were running a local test so that makes deployment of the thing uh, easy so yeah <laughs> yeah th those those two things are well i guess that that are interesting uh developments um so uh, i'm trying to remember did you mention something did you call out something else for me to uh dive into a little deeper or um, those, um not uh those two are the ones that continually pop to, to my mind as being like you know really intriguing and um, coming from spending a lot of time on the Meshery project, um, those to enable uh, the uh, enable a tool like Meshery or our users to answer a bunch of questions that we've that the community has had sort of sitting out there latent. Um, right. Things that are, I think things that are hard to answer just um, like. No. So, so one thing that that's also I think nice to mention is that if you know I'm describing like the adaptive load control and the horizontal scaling, but because of the um, abstraction that's like abstracting away from all that, the adaptive load controller can also talk towards that horizontally scaled system and well, basically barely be uh, aware of it, you know, doing something uh, that's actually running remotely. Yeah. So like, to, to me, the um, though that type of a capability opens up the ability to answer questions that my little brain has yet to ask. Like I'm like I, I think you can go um, like performance characterization uh, or describing Nighthawk as a layer seven performance characterization characterization tool is exactly what you had said, and and that's exactly what I think of here is um, like the high fidelity way, the new fidelity ways in which you can you can characterize the performance of your environments is like I don't I don't I mean there, there's one other load generator that comes to mind that um, is isn't nearly as sophisticated but has some amount of horizontal distribution and I want to say it's like octopus or like uh, that's not the name of it. I can't remember it. I wish I could because I'll go on record that that maintainer is not a, not a friendly individual, <laughs> not a welcoming and collaborative individual. Moreover, the project just isn't as if it's so, so. Anyway, so super pleased about um, the discussions that we've been having, some of the work that's been um, going on, Otto, with you and Jacob and uh, Hutch, and just the feedback that, that's been gotten. There's a number of um, other folks on the call today who have. Um, who you know, broadly participate in the uh, service mesh community, participate in and around some of Layer 5's um, initiatives, one being Meshery and service mesh performance and some of these other things. They've been, um, well, my wife hates it when I say this, but uh, they've been hot to trot on uh, this, uh, this initiative. They've been, um, I think, excited to see, well, to answer some of those same questions. I mean, uh, part of the mission of a tool like Meshery is to just, is to make service, is to help people adopt them um, and do it a little easier and answer questions like, what should I expect? What, what type of, what, the, the question, the exact question that you just phrased, which is like, um, if our requirement is we need to stay under, if we have this SLA, this SLO, how do we stay within that given the fact that we have this, we, we consistently have this QPS or like, what, what are those inflection points for us? When do we trigger? When do we, and that's just one of any number of, I think other questions that could potentially be answered or at least characterized much more problem statements that be, could be characterized much more fully to be able to more intelligently to give people a, a bunch more info that they would need to, to run their systems better. Yeah, it could have been Locust, uh, Adina is a good call. I, yeah. Um, if 
if the subtitle of that maintainer is douche, then that's probably the one. I don't know. Anyway, bad jokes. Uh, so, so, so there's a, um, a project that's coming forth here. Um, uh, Get Nighthawk that um, has been pleasantly, um, warmly received. It's the notion that Nighthawk's been growing in popularity, and we and but it, but it, there's only auto. There's there's only a there's a single a single distribution artifact that's available for Nighthawk? Is, is that an inaccurate statement? Like, are there, is no, there that's, a... that, that, that's an accurate statement. There are actually, actually they are two, but they are similar. Uh, so right now we push uh, Docker images to uh, Docker Hub and, uh, and that's it. Yeah. So um, this initiative, uh, get Nighthawk, is to well uplift um, Nighthawk and get it get into other people's hands to spend some more time with Auto and the other maintainers of Nighthawk to um, help uh, help and take advantage of uh, from a meshery perspective help and take advantage of Nighthawk's capabilities and um, you know get, get expose those to more folks um, you know in, in different ways. Okay, so there's a couple of couple of early so, so we actually covered this topic a bit last time we met so so this is why I'm sort of skipping um, through a little bit of this and that's to say um, let's dispense with the pleasantries and uh, let, let the, the rubber meet the road on some things like there's a few there's a, a few folks that are weren't able to make it today uh, by the way though I, I Three of them will will, will be rewatching this, um, but they're they're raring to go. And so so let me introduce a couple. And, and that's um so uh, Pratia Banerjee also goes by Neil, which is easier for some of us. Neil, you're on the call. Do you want to say hi and, and talk about kind of your your where you're looking to make a mark on the project? Yeah. So my name is Neil, and uh, from India. So I want to like. Uh, as I said to Lee, I want to contribute to the NIDA project. And initially for the first part, I want to make the site up and running as soon as possible. And yeah, that's for now. So, to, 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 so thank you, Neil. Um, to, so Neil has done this success. By the way, um, Neil is almost, well, uh, Neil is a maintainer of the Service Mesh Performance website as well. So he's no, um, he's quite familiar with these types of websites, moreover ones that are right within the realm of what we're trying to do. Um, ultimately part of what I'm hoping that we'll accomplish with Get Nighthawk and, and these initiatives is a few different things. It's um, a little bit of uh, potentially some compatibility with service mesh performance as you go to as uh, you go to um, inform Nighthawk of a load that you would like, you know, of, of a load that you would like for it to generate and the ways in which you would like for it to do that. Nighthawk has its own mechanism for doing that. Um, SMP, the service mesh performance is, um, you know, coming forth hopefully as a, I mean, standard is a, a strong word, but just uh, coming forth as a specification for doing that consistently. And so there's discussions to be had around that and where or how that might happen. Um, wow, well, I'm, I'm digressing. There's a lot of different um, things to connect here. What I was going to say is very pleased that Neil is here. He's done this before for um, another relevant site. There's um, this link to Figma is in the, at the bottom of uh, the Get Nighthawk project. So hopefully everyone can access it. Um, hopefully you're able to comment on it too, to the extent that I'll, I'll put a link into the uh, chat. You know, please comment. Um, the designer here, he's not on the call right now. His name's Augustine. A lot of, lot of different people coming to bear on what, what sort of on the surface of it looks like a small project. But my hope is, is that it's not, that it ends up being, um, it ends up in, you know, popularizing Nighthawk's capabilities a bit, enabling people with a few different things that they couldn't otherwise do. Um, there are, so, so I'm you know, quite pleased that Otto has been so warmly engaging in, in particular, in part because 
because uh, because there's some there's some suggestions being made about um, like like this this logo here this this is a, just a, dra a draft of like what could potentially come to be not necessarily not not that that is Nighthawk's logo but but to the extent that Nighthawk doesn't have another site then you know something auto for you to kind of think about and internalize or maybe um, how closely you'd like for this set of work to kind of embody Nighthawk directly versus sort of sit on the side of, of it. And, um, but so Neil, you had put together and you know, all of this is up for comment and that's why we're walking through it is Neil had put together sort of a, a project site um, and its purpose, uh, some sections that it would have sort of um, to try to indicate how much content would be on there and the scope of it. And so structure, some designs, uh, uh, an early um, domain has been registered. I wouldn't click on the link right now because it's just it's just an early design. It's just uh, totally under construction. Very good. Um, uh, if I'm not that wrong, there is another design of the Get Night Echo logo in the Figma file. Can you open it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, just oh. above it. Yeah, this one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, I did this one and I did the other one. <laughs> so anyone can say anything that they want about it without fear of hurting feelings. So, um, th this was sort of inspired from the fact that a nighthawk is a, is a bird. It's yeah. Sort of looks like a bird. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So well, personally, I like that second one, but, um, so what, maybe we should um like uh, raise a vote uh, uh on some slack channel on what's the better best option is totally <laughs> it maybe maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a third as well um, I, I only ch chuckled to say like hey I, I think for my part if i was in auto shoes i would it's kind of a sens sensitive thing i mean I'm like uh, I, I remember how the name nighthawk came to be and that's actually that uh, that was quite a bit of um a bike sharing and uh, well in the end we were we just uh, raised the vote and uh, well that ended up being it <laughs> <laughs> okay. nice okay uh, very good i will take a um uh, and so by the way adina is another individual on the call who's been um engaged with um these projects she's been helping with continuous integration on in um the meshery project and Thankfully, she's also intrigued by Get Nighthawk, which has a lot to do with, you know, part of its initial challenge is around continuous integration and producing distributions of Nighthawk. So, so maybe we would switch to that topic because that, that's a bit of where the rubber meets the road as well is um, guidance auto for people who, for, uh, there's a few contributors who are looking to spend time getting fancy inside of uh, GitHub Actions, inside of the workflows there, and you getting familiar with Envoy's, well, with Nighthawk's tool chain and sort of the uh, you know, Basil and the, the whole, where, where, how do these folks get, get ramped or where, where do they go to look for the current build process? I mean, like what, what gotchas, what caveats should they watch out for? Yeah, so, um well, to be honest it's um it's a little bit more involved still than i'd like it to be uh because there's kind of like we piggyback on envoy and that um uh well building through through like docker images that's easy of of course but like preparing your own environment to do the same that's um uh well then you've got to be pretty pedantic about uh, you know the specific build needs of the project and uh, that that may require a bit of uh tinkering uh, and once you've gone through that um you'll also find that the project is it's not like um a very small build it takes quite a bit of time uh, or maybe even half of the battery of my laptop so it's uh it's a significant build um so 
yeah so that's that's you know uh, if it's possible i would actually consume the docker images that get pushed uh, but if it's necessary then uh, yeah building is possible um i'd start out with the readme and at some point that punch you towards envoys readme for building the docs because basically the requirements are exactly the same um and from there you know once that's set um yeah, you should be set to go. And so, um, so, so Adina and Anish is here as well. And actually, um, 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 Ranganan, thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. I, um, yeah, hi. Yeah, so actually, yeah, I go with Sunku, uh, more or less. Nobody knows me as Ranganan, but yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> That's a, it's a, yeah, I know. So my name, it's kind of messed up, but it's okay. No, yeah. See, the thing is, is um, I sit high and mighty. And nobody ever, nobody ever asked me how to pronounce my name. I don't know why. It's, it's just an easy one. Good. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, thanks for sharing this. Um, um, so right now, I'm looking into Nidox. So I'll come back to you with uh, certain. Um, questions about uh, how it's composed and the, uh, the components of how it's testing. Uh, so right now I've been doing analysis with Fort.io, so uh, Nighthawk is kind of the next one that uh, we'll be working on. So yeah, soon I'll have some feedback. Right. Yeah, very good. Um, so, so, so. Yeah, can uh, it will be, uh, so from what I started and not continue, it was that I need to build Envoy first if I want to build the uh, Nighthawk. Um, no, no, I, uh, there's no need to build Envoy itself first, um, but you need to get the- Take all the uh, steps from the workflows from there. Yeah, yeah, the build um, uh, prerequisites are the same. And another thing, the let's call it like a base image, the base image that should be used is the Ubuntu 18, if it will be a Ubuntu distribution, or we can go with a higher one. Um, actually, actually, I, I just answered to my question. No, we need specific uh, GCC libraries from what I, I think. So yeah, that was the thing. If I want to build for the Ubuntu distribution, what should be the base image, the version that I should take? Or for Debian, doesn't matter. Um, I think this is kind of like a... Um, uh, so first, I don't know from the top of my head, so I should check like what's the oldest version that Ubuntu, uh, or the oldest Ubuntu version that can be used to build a thing on. And then I pick the yeah, oldest that's, one. That's because, yeah, and, I, and then I pick the oldest one and hoping that um, the resulting <laughs> binaries will be compatible on all the newer releases. Okay, so, other than that, the depend the OS requirements, let's say the, the, the dependency, the library dependencies are the one from the Envoy. Yeah. For, for the building Envoy. Yeah, that's okay. right. Thanks. Thank you. So, and, and also, you know, if, because um, I don't have like every, every uh, requirement on the top of my head because, uh, um, well, both en Envoy is like a, a fast moving target in a sense that things change at rather a high pace. And um, so yeah, no need to answer. That was the question of top of, I was thinking like, Put a put, put a question where you're having so blocks and so on because I don't have it I don't have my own laptop with me it's broken now so <laughs> right right but no uh, like if you uh, have any questions you know when you actually start uh, cracking on this and run into anything just feel free to uh, ping me on Slack or some such and we'll figure yeah it out. so I will try it myself but I think I will need like some assistance to get the workflow done. Sure. So in knowing about these issues is also valuable because hopefully, you know, we can then update uh, or add to readme somewhere to uh, 
help people coming after us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, what will help me to have more confidence will be if at one point you have a you have time or so the current workflow like it is. Uh, I don't know exactly now what was the bottleneck, but there was a point where I did not get uh, how the envoy gets the build uh, is getting builded built right. i mean it's like let's say you run the build and then you have the console of the build and you, you see all the things that happened i didn't saw it or actually yeah this is if if you have a build of nighthawk doesn't matter which version doesn't matter which operating system or and so on but it's like the ci workflow that they have it on the envoy yeah. Not from the necessary from the Nighthawk, also from the Envoy would be enough. Yeah, it kind of sounds like I want to, the I want the internet in a <laughs> in a file. Sorry. No, but uh, I I think I'm missing. I was missing something, and if I would have like um, an output of what is executing, then. So, so um, maybe it's good to iterate on that then uh, offline. If you can, you know, reproduce that um, issue you ran into and, and copy paste it to me, then um, well, maybe I can help them. Yep. And offline, where should I or how would I contact you not to be a spam or something? Uh, well, I'm in the um, um, layer five uh, uh, Slack channel, so maybe over there. My nick is, uh, let me paste it. Something with auto chat. problem. Yeah, yeah, that, that's my handle in the, in the chat right there. Okay. Thank you. No problem. But I don't think it's going to be today or tomorrow, so. No, that's fine. Whenever, uh, whenever you're up for it. <laughs> uh, quick confirmation, um, Otto. The the current Nighthawk workflow that's in um, Circle CI is used for that. So, so this is the uh, current build workflow. Yes, that's right. Okay. No, but that, that but that uh, piggybacks on the build image from Envoy, right? So that um, well. That makes things easier because that has all the, the prerequisites already uh, there. Nice. Okay. Um, maybe to so so good. So we, so we talked about the where the site designs are, or the site structure, the site designs, um, sort of draft logos, draft draft designs. Uh, everyone here is welcome to assert opinions, and um, we'll do. You know, like auto a great suggestion on on a poll and voting and, and things. Um, uh, Rodolfo uh, Martinez is another individual who's um, will hopefully collaborate with with Adina and make some waves around CI. So he he, he isn't able to join today. Uh, he's over at Rackspace actually. Um, okay, there. Um, so the state of so speaking um, um Sunku of the speaking of using Fortio and night trying out Nighthawk, the current state of Nighthawk support in Meshery as these projects come together is well is in part what's dry what sort of initially was driving um, this effort, and that is that. Um, it's been convenient for a Golang-based project like Meshery to be able to use Fortio as a Golang-based um, utility and basically as a, as a library in that, in that respect. It, um, Meshery wrap, pr provides a Golang wrapper, if you will, around WRK2, which 
I don't know if that's C or C++ or what, but it's, it's not Go. And it's one of the Cs. And so- Yeah, I believe uh, that C++, was, yeah. Was it? Okay, oh. Um, and so that was the original approach taken, or it is sort of the original and current approach taken to um, integrating Meshery with Nighthawk. And that has been to wrap some Golang around um, Nighthawk's CLI, or Nighthawk's um, uh, command line interface. And, and that's, this is, in, in a, uh, you know, the difficulty of kind of getting, um, or it running in separate. So, so it's um, sometimes ideal that that might run separately in a different container because to what Otto had described before that taking and um, distributing, you know, um, littering, yeah. littering, littering a cluster with multiple instances of Nighthawk is, is you know probably easy, easily done using a container and scheduling a container in a Kubernetes in, in a cluster, um, but it's not the only. But it's also highly convenient for a tool like Meshery to have Nighthawk um, built in or within the same container or available there. And so, I don't know what I'm what I'm trying to say. I guess I'm guess I'm sort of trying to switch. I'm sort of saying, hey, we covered these topics. Now, one of the other topics is the horizontal distribution and Nighthawk's support for that. So the, you, you, Otto, earlier you described what that capability is, but the, the current state of that capability is in flight, available? No, it is in flight. I've, um, uh, I think I've, like everything uh, ready uh, for it, except uh, one challenge. And that is that, um, so currently what it's able to, it, it hasn't landed yet. So this, this needs to go through review still, but um, the current state of my working branch of that is that it's able to um, collect <coughs> all the outputs but the outputs they come in streaming because we're also preparing for our force well aggregating like the raw or high fidelity results so not aggregated results so um so what i'm trying to say here is that um that there is one uh, slightly challenging part about it and that is that this you know if we're gonna aggregate very large responses then first you know all these these um these 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 large outputs needs to be sent in chunks towards the uh, a, a central aggregation point within the uh cluster like the horizontally scaled uh, load generating cluster um and that's like the part that i'm trying to solve now having said that what is working is um actually quite a bit and that is that you just can get um, the unaggregated outputs of all the instances involved. But that's just uh, not super convenient yet because for us humans, that's kind of like a lot to digest, digest. Uh, in the sense that, you know, if you have like 200 nodes generating loads, then you'll get 200 result sets in and then you need to go over these to make sense out of them. Uh, ideally, we, um, do something with that and the plan is then to um, um, so we're using HDR histogram as one of the technologies for histograms under the hood and that one is able to merge these statistics we'll be able to do that with the current state and that that's pretty easy so long term short um, I actually think it's about time that I create a, um, um, a pull request for that and then um, separate on a separate track uh, finish up some stuff that's related towards, um, well, um, streaming raw statistics, so to speak. Sorry, does that make sense? I'm uh, <laughs> trying to uh, uh, compute state uh, of this uh, on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> you're, having to, you're having to do your own aggregation at the... Yeah, so I, but I actually think I'm, I'm able to make a pull request that would, would like following the 800 rule, you know, it would be quite useful um, uh, as is, so. Oh, nice. And, and then we'll be, you know, we'll be needing some time to land that. And I think that that might be, oh, 
well, weeks to months. Uh, it will go in tiny parts and it's quite a bit of code, so. Um, it, so one of the, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I'm saying, um, no, it's just, this makes sense. Um, so one of the um, models that we're looking at um, uh, performance is, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, not so traffic. Uh, in the sense like uh, our focus is on like a telco workload. So uh, from that perspective, it's more measuring uh, from outside the cluster or within the cluster, how would how much would a, a node, uh, what's the performance of a node uh, uh, for the microservices that are running on the node. So in that sense, we send in like a, uh, I know, uh, gigs of traffic across the node to see how the microservices perform within the node. Uh, if not, we're scaling across two or three nodes, but um, yeah, so that's another model that uh, looking into uh, see how not south uh, traffic model works uh, and how these tools are helping us to uh, kind of achieve the, that type of results. Um, and right now I see for Dio, I mean, there's still things to investigate to see why it uh, behaves at the way it does uh, to a certain, um, when we scale beyond certain QPS, like 10,000 QPS or whatnot. So, uh, yeah, you have to figure out how Nighthawk does uh, and how it scales. Is there any comment on, as to, how, like, you know, with, what tool would be good or as, is Nighthawk suitable for this type of test? Um... So I'm sorry, I'm still trying to digest. Um, uh, here, let me uh, let me um, toss in a thought. If uh, unless Otto, would you about to give one? No, uh, go ahead. Oh yeah, I, uh, so one of the things he said, um, Sunku, is um, it hits home from uh, from the perspective of um, tooling to support. Uh, it sounded like you were looking at characterizing the, or you wanted to make sure that as you are characterizing the performance of um, large volumes of requests, like of a telco sized um, environment, that mm -hmm. you're doing so in consideration of the impact that generating load when done from within the cluster, you, like you, you don't have a clean scientific, you don't have a clean vacuum. You're, you're, you're dirtying the lab with, um, which can, which I think is, which, which is actually why um, the horizontal distribution capability, or horizontal scal scalability is interesting to me because it's like, to, to me, all the test cases are valid. Like, is, is it, are you dirtying your environment if you're generating load and burning some CPU and um, from within the cluster? Um, yes. Is that valid? Well, I think so. Do you have um, microservices deployed and spread across your cluster? Yeah. Are they talking to each other? Yeah. Is one generating load against the next? Yeah. Okay. But, but for uh, in other test situations, it's like, look, um, what we want to do is pretend that we're a user that all, and we want to generate from user traffic and, and we want to have this, the direction controlled here. All, everything gets generated externally, maybe multiple source, sources externally, maybe multiple endpoints at the same time, which is another exciting capability of Nighthawk. Um, that um, hence um, that's been a focus of the um, meshery project is to <clears throat> deploy is for meshery to easily deploy outside of a cluster generate load or use nighthawk or, or the other others to generate load or to do it internally and to give people hopefully easy to use tooling that they can repeat those um, you know, uh, results within Sunku, are both of those valid for you? Am I putting words in your mouth when you're saying uh, that you would want to do both and there's certain situations, you know, certain test cases that are appropriate for one versus the other? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, both are valid, uh, surely. Um, I, I think uh, from a telco deployment standpoint, um, generally each node might not have a tons of microservices um, where you want to do East West across uh, like a tens of microservices within a single node. I most likely have a, a few important, couple of important um, uh, CNFs to say as a container network functions, and I said deployed in probably a microservice fashion. Uh, <coughs> and 
and <coughs> sorry, that's why um, you know so the traffic going in and out of a node is crucial. Uh, characterizing that is crucial. At the same time, uh, of course, they are deployed in a cluster fashion, so surely need uh, uh, to understand the performance across uh, um, these microservices uh, scaled across like few servers, few server nodes. Uh, so yeah, both kind of models are uh, surely important. And I guess the, the key part there is, um, you know, what kind of network characteristics that uh, in a sense like uh, net, uh, network parameters that they consider scaling TCP sockets or uh, consider how is the layer three, layer four uh, tuning done in these tools uh, in, in order to, uh, in order for sidecars to kind of process them and deliver the HTTP package to their actual application, right? So that's something, uh, you know, to consider uh, in leveraging these tools. <coughs> and uh, part of my effort is to understand that, um, see how these tools are performing and how, like, how would they satisfy their needs or what can be uh, tweaked a little bit to kind of satisfy the telco needs. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, I'm not sure if I make sense, but yeah. Yeah, to me, it's um, uh, very clear why you're on this call. <laughs> you just, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad that you're on the call. Very nice to, so there's a lot of, there's, there's not that many people that um, I've been able to connect with that are trying to study that. Um, and I think that, you, you know, it becomes, it's more meaningful to study the higher the volumes you have, the more, the more impact um, yeah. tuning of performance has. But, yeah. so, um, so, so uh, I actually, you know, for, with respect towards the internal um, and external um, uh, load generation, um, I would be like the bigger <laughs> fan. I think I totally agree with that. Um, um, putting like the um, the load generators outside of the test subject so to speak um, makes uh, a lot of sense um, but I the, but but the thing is so far like um, well most of the open source systems that I've seen that actually do this type of testing they all generate it internal in the cluster and I think that is because it's more convenient because the tooling that's being used um, well it doesn't come with the features to easily do it in another way. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but from a scientific point of view, when you consider the environment, that's like a pretty important aspect, right? So you want to, ideally, you have lightly loaded clients and then um, a totally noise-free environment for the test subject. So that, that, that's my 2P, but I think that it imposes some requirements on the tooling that you're using. And um, well, hopefully Nighthawk uh, does, does make that uh, a bit easier with um, being able to drive um, like a, a separate cluster that you could set up for load generation, which then um, sends like the test workload towards another cluster that you're actually interested in measuring. And then even maybe, you know, if, if that uh, cluster under test could then also have an egress, you know, if you need origins that those reside in another cluster and then um, and that, that, that seems to be like a more clean approach to me. And it's also easier to set up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I yeah, that, like, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, go, go ahead. No, it's just to say uh, in, in terms of um, load generation, right? So uh, traditionally, at least from a telco models, we have um, RFCs uh, like provided by IETF. Uh, for example, layer three RFC 2544 is a popular one and that determines how many frames, how many, like what's the rate when to back off, uh, right? So when to uh, open sockets or when to, uh, and it's, it's all layer three. So um, what kind of packets, like how to measure these packets and when, uh, how are the packet drops measured? So all of these are kind of goes per standard. And and these tools that we are looking at, and I know it's layer four to layer seven, but 
you know, so, so that's something we need to kind of uh, standardize in my opinion to kind of say, uh, you know, so what, what's your uh, TCP scaling algorithm? What, what, how, how are you scaling your uh, HTTP packets? Like when, when can you, what kind of codes re to return when, right? So, uh, so that's, that's uh, something I see a difference between these tools and when you're measuring performance uh, right, latencies especially uh, based on the tool you use. The latencies are a different number than, um, although you configure in the same environment, right? So then that's not necessarily a standardized representation of what your latency is, uh, right? Unless your whole company uses the same tool forever, kind of thing, right? So yeah. and, and that's uh, I think that's a gap uh, they need to address. Um, yeah, so running some benchmarks internally. Uh, so uh, yeah, I hope, hope to make some progress there. You, you have a captive audience here. <laughs> good. There's uh, some cool, I'd, I'd, if you don't mind, I've got a request of you. And as we go to wrap up today's call, maybe a couple, we can kind of recap some, some action items if, if we can. Um, sure. So I'm gonna, I'll feel completely at leisure, Sunku, to just uh, throw one your way, which is, um, I'd be really curious for your thoughts, kind of feedback about um, the concept of Meshmark, which is articulated in the slide here. So I'll put that, um, but it's also a bit further described on the SMP spec.io site, so here. Um, uh, Otto has um, offered some thoughts on the subject in the past as well. And we are, so to say things, to articulate this really concisely, or just to say, hey, we're looking to um, pick up this, this thread and this piece of work and um, engage in academia to do so. Um, and so we have uh, a couple of different universities with supporting professors to do to, uh, to hopefully create an algorithm or, or define how this should be measured and how it would work. Um, and so I'd be curious for your feedback next time we meet or before next time we meet. Um, I've asked for a mailing list separate from the SIG network mailing list for the service mesh working group um, so that as we potentially use that to drive some of our collaboration that uh, that we're not spamming the uh, CNI guys with Nighthawk stuff or, or what, you know, whatever. So hopefully that's coming forth. That's an action item for me. Um, Neil, I know you're from moving fairly briskly through iterating on the, the site designs. Um, I've seen some commits coming through from you. Adina, it sounds like you're going to um, go off, read some readmes. We'll probably bring Rodolfo up to speed as well and make an attempt at some, some builds. Um, and um, Anish has been here absorbing. So I don't know if he's still on, but yep, he is. Yeah, I'm here. So you're very much in danger of being put to work. So just uh, be. Yeah, I'm just waiting for it. <laughs> cool, good. I'm, I'm gonna catch up with you just after the call, just not to make everybody, um, but, um, and Nikolai, I uh, I dare not try to try to task you. I mean, if that if that was to happen, I would talk to you about SMI conformance. But um, hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't no no comment. Don't don't say anything. No, uh, uh, fair enough. Did did we Nikolai or or other? Did, did we miss anything? Are we? Is that a wrap for today? Um, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, actually, just one last question for me. Sinclair, do you you characterize some of the your current focus? Um, any particular goals that you're chasing after, uh, other than the, the one that you generally described, or any particular questions that you're looking to answer? Um, yeah, I mean, I recently started this work, so I'm a little bit in a still early stage, and these are some of the gaps. I'm noticing with respect to what we want to help uh, telcos with. 
but yeah, so soon I'll, uh, I'll have some more data and have some more information as to what tools and I used how and or what could tools look like, uh, things like that. So uh, in coming weeks, uh, probably I'll have some more feedback as we go. Sounds good. Folks. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at the mystery surely. Um, and uh, yeah, probably uh, probably we can have a chat offline or so like going ahead. That'd be great. That'd be nice. Thanks. Well, uh, much appreciated all. Uh, we'll have this uh, topic in a couple of weeks from now, but I, I anticipate some slacking in the meantime. So thank you all. Uh, see you in a couple of weeks. Talk to you later. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye, Lee. Bye. Bye. Bye.